good afternoon all of you i hope you all and your families are staying safe today we are at this platform for webinar on evolution of marketing practice through and uh, post covid this webinar is a part of knowledge sharing activity of the council which we have been doing uh, since june we have with us uh, mr thomas burgess chairman national council on branding and marketing and mr vasudev mukherjee assistant secretary general asochem and two eminent expert mr vikram sukhuja uh, group ceo medicine media and mr uh, saurabh bajaj uh, head marketing dairy britannia further uh, taking a uh, long time i would like to uh, request mr uh, thomas burgess uh, to give his uh, welcome address over to you sir so you have to unmute thank you krishnan i hope you all can see me and hear me yes okay thank you uh, so welcome to all the people who are joining in uh, for the webinar uh, the topic of today's webinar is evolution of marketing practices through and post the pandemic uh, this is a part of the series of webinar that we have been doing as part of the work of the new branding and marketing council and uh, this if my memory serves me right is the fourth in that series and hopefully we'll have many more uh, i would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, the distinguished speakers uh, both of whom have huge amounts of experience in this industry and would probably be amongst the best people uh, in the country to talk about the situation uh, in terms of marketing practices and marketing strategies uh, both uh, pre pandemic and post pandemic how it has evolved so we are talking about the evolution how a pandemic of this global nature uh, which has brought the world to a standstill has uh, has to be countered through appropriate marketing strategies so let me introduce uh, the two speakers uh, first we have mr vikram sakoja who is a group ceo of madison media Vikram is a very dear friend, and in fact, what many people do not know is that he virtually started his career. It doesn't appear on the bio data, with uh, working with uh, somewhat with me in the earliest part of his career. Uh, Vikram is an equity partner uh, and group CEO at Madison Media and OOH, India's largest independent media agency. In his 30-year career, he has been the global CEO of Maxis. The CEO of Group M South Asia and Mindshare South Asia. Vikram started his career with PNG and Coca Cola in media, market research and brand marketing. He also set up the marketing department at Star India. I mean, his career has been a very illustrious career, and it's been my privilege to have known him for a good share of this, particularly when he was the uh, Group CEO of Mindshare and uh, you know um, Group M uh, 3M, and uh, we had. We've worked together for a number of years, and thank you, Vikram, for being here and not just being here, but also partnering with another uh, 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 illustrious speaker, Saurabh Bajaj. Thank you again, Vikram. Bajaj, yeah, thank you. Uh, Saurabh Bajaj is the marketing head of the dairy business at Britannia. And um, uh, again, Saurabh, your current CEO is a dear friend of mine, and uh, he's also been very helpful on many occasions and of course the previous ceo was also a very very dear friend unfortunately i think she left and she's doing something else now uh, he holds expertise in business development sales and marketing and innovation uh, from being a civil engineering graduate from the delhi college of engineering who enjoyed pure science and research he's gone on to become a proud alumni of iim indore to pursue a career in marketing in FMCG companies. With over 16 years of experience in top companies like Britannia, uh, Diageo, Mondelez, and Wipro Consumer Care, uh, he is a very uh, appropriate speaker for this occasion. He has also been recently recognized as a marketing marvel by White Page International as 
amongst the best 50 marketeers. So I think without much ado, I would like to hand over the stage to my friends from the council, both Vikram and Saurabh. And we are looking forward to an absolutely interesting one hour or plus of discussions between the two of you and your presentations. So I believe, uh, Saurav, are you going first? Yeah, yeah. That's okay, right. so over, over to Saurav. Thank you very Thank you much, so much again for all the people who have joined in on this call. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, looking forward to this conversation and I hope uh, everybody enjoys it as much as you know we enjoyed pulling it together. So, uh, you know, as we uh, got into uh, this piece, you know, uh, you know, I and uh, Mr. Sakuja had a number of engagements and we said that, you know, as we try and explain this entire, uh, you know, set of observations, we would like to start with business trends. So, you know, whatever we are speaking is grounded in reality and uh, we can really, uh, you know, put pen to paper as to what's really been going on. Uh, and then, you know, through these various phases, how has, uh, you know, how is the consumer sort of, uh, gone through uh, you know various uh, moments and how has how has hence uh, marketeers you know communicated effectively and then beyond the communication we see a lot of very interesting trends that have happened across industries so we said can we you know delve into some of them and how does that talk to the data that we have uh, so what those fresh trends are what are the key insights that you know which are, which can then become uh, you know starting points for everybody else to look at their uh, you know lives and portfolios and from there, uh, of course, Mr. Sekuja has pulled this together in terms of a playlist for uh, for you know people on how they want to uh, track in media and their uh, key choices on their strategies. So that's really the broad flow. Yeah. So going to the first part, uh, you know, as, as we all experienced, uh, you know, while the wave one was bad, uh, wave two uh, really shook all of us. You know, the kind of uh, number of cases. I think it really became uh, really real for all of us. And I would say there'll be very few of us who have not had, you know, somebody or the other in our, you know, close or extended family impacted. And despite a lot of preparation by the government and by other sources, I think a lot of our infrastructure was fairly overwhelmed. And, you know, and for the kind of pieces that we saw, it's no surprise that's what's happened. Yeah. But, you know, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is, you know, after a sharp fall in GDP uh, in the first quarter of the pandemic uh, about 18 months back, uh, we are now seeing a, a, a fairly aggressive uh, rebound and recovery. And, you know, after a 7% degrowth of GDP last year, we're looking at a, a maybe almost a double digit uh, GDP growth this year. We should hopefully uh, wipe away, you know, some of the ills and put some uh, wind into the sails of, you know, most of us doing our day jobs. Yeah. Now, uh, however, you know, con consumer confidence for the current situation remains low. And, you know, from a future index is, it's actually well above hundred percent, but yeah, currently it is, uh, you know, it uh, remains uh, in a mood where the consumer feels that things are a bit pensive, but on the flip side, the business confidence, now that's rising very, very quickly. Right. And it probably is in line with the fact that the consumer believes that, uh, there will be a, a fairly sharp recovery, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, in a few months time, maybe. Right. And, uh, and I guess it's that uh, buoyancy, not just from what. Uh, consumers and people running the market in India are feeling, but also what the FII feels about uh, the India, the fundamentals of the Indian economy, right? And maybe that's what is uh, really driving the BSE Sensex, the Nifty to record levels, right? And we can see that kind of a optimism uh, in the market coming in. Yeah. Now, while there is a sense of optimism, uh, it is not impacting all sectors in a similar manner. You know, there are certain sectors which frankly, did not see much of a shift. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have been a part of a, a food and grocery, groceries category, uh, which is, you know, defined as essentials. And uh, groceries, household goods, healthcare, you know, from a spending pattern, it didn't really see much shift, uh, even during the, uh, the, uh, the wave one, nor in wave two. You know, the gray line here is about uh, what was the spending pattern in, uh, gray, in, uh, in the wave one, and the green line is about wave two. So if you see, Groceries, everyday households, utilities, healthcare, uh, medicines, that, was, that has remained fairly robust in terms of consumer spending patterns, right? One sec section which got uh, quite badly hit in wave one was really housing. You know, I think uh, a lot of people did not want to invest in real estate. It seemed like a, a risky investment. A lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, plans went on hold. 
right? But uh, as you see the market right now, in the you know last few months, there's a certain there's amount there's a certain buoyancy that is starting to come in, right? And rightfully so because you know with so many so many of us spending so much of our time indoors, it's but natural that we would want to improve uh, the you know the place that we are spending most of our time in, yeah. Uh, travel continues to be impacted while all of us are trying to make our uh, sneak vacations uh, to Goa, maybe for a couple of days. But uh, travel as a section remains uh, fairly badly impacted. It was hit really badly in, in wave one. And even now, you're not really seeing much recovery. You are having uh, some trends in which people are trying to have a small getaway. But obviously, it's, it's going to be some time before you know I and you plan our next international vacation. Uh, furnishing clothing, apparel, footwear, electronics, uh, it was obviously hit really badly during the wave one. Wave two, I think we've all been a little more adventurous. Uh, I think not only have we been a little more adventurous and adventurous, the sector has also tried to, uh, you know, work hard to try to, you know, do pop up stores, try to, uh, you know, push uh, online retail. And there has been some resurgence clearly that we are seeing in clothing, apparel, as well as electronics as we are in the second wave, right? And uh, consumers continue to prioritize saving. Uh, I think the big billion day uh, sale is there in the next two or three days. Let's see, if, you know, what new records are set there. But clearly, there has been a kind of an asymmetric uh, impact on categories. Yeah, but let's see. Let's go a little deeper now into some of them. Uh, so first is, you know, when we try to map uh, where is the demand impacted most, you know, is it urban, is it rural? And, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, the CMIE uses as a surrogate for urban demand is really the, uh, the sale of uh, durable goods. And that's not been impacted as much, uh, sort of showing that urban demand is largely resilient, right? Rural demand uh, has uh, seen, uh, you know, drops, obviously, owing to, uh, I mean, as caught by the non-durable goods good index. And it's also probably due to the fact that, you know, there was so much a reverse migration last year. Uh, there is only so much of employment that can be provided while some of the employment indexes are up. But really, uh, you know, rural demand has seen a more of a beating, while urban demands largely remains resilient. Uh, Again, you know, as we see the Sensex uh, bouncing up, you know, last year after March, after there was a sharp fall in Sensex, a lot of FMCG majors really saw ever highest uh, numbers in the market, right? So somewhere in the first phase of the pandemic, it was really the FMCG index, which was more resilient and holding and driving the market. In this second bull run that we are seeing now, it has actually been the durable index and discretionary goods and services which is also a good sign which says that uh, that the consumer and the market is prioritizing sectors beyond just fmcg and hence there is more buoyancy probably expected in rest of these sectors as well uh, even automobiles like i mentioned uh, it saw a very sharp fall last year it saw a fair amount of pickup and you know you know as you uh, you know as we read some reports it's probably that uh, you know people felt that you know maybe now more than ever i need my own car because i will not be able to get along in maybe public transportation uh, the exports business sort of has remained steady, has only gone up, but even the domestic sales of automobiles has seen a resurgence post May. So even sectors as diverse as auto are seeing some movement upwards. Wireless traffic, no surprise, it has been growing really robustly, and and we have now as much as 780 million uh, broadband uh, subscribers. So it's a uh, meteoric shift in terms of you know how you are seeing in broad in the broadband and, and it really uh, talks about how all of us have got all the more comfortable you know working on our so-called zoom calls yeah and the sector is uh, investing ahead of the curve so if you were to see the hiring trends across industries and it and it software services have had a large bump up even in may and june so there are a lot of reports of how uh salaries in the sector have been rising clearly poised to the fact that you know, digital is going to be a revolution, which is likely to impact every industry and we should start preparing ahead of the curve for it. Uh, again, uh, while the economic activity has, you know, uh, gone uh, to and fro, it has been a yo-yo along with the, uh, the pandemic, but really a new shopper journey has emerged and that's really UPI transactions. So 600,000 crore in terms of UPI transactions. So it is really you know moved uh, 6x in the last 18 months right so you know I, I think it's quite fair to say that in the digital revolution we are probably caught up to a decade uh, a decade's worth of uh you know movement in probably just uh 18 months so it's been a large shift there 
and of course uh, life sciences and healthcare has been a real hero i think that's been a sector that all of us have been looking at in fact 2021 saw the year as the highest ever infusion of fdi uh, with 6500 uh, crores uh, 6500 yeah 100 crores of fdi in the pharmaceutical sector in quarter 3 right uh, also the vaccination drive has been you know going on probably as promised and uh, by the 14th of july we had as much as 24% of india vaccinated right so uh, i think some of the optimism that we are seeing in the market is uh, on the back of the fact that you know the government's vaccination plan seem to be going as per plan and we are seeing uh, you know hopefully uh, uh, a, a, a you know more robust recovery than most of us would have anticipated had have these trends continued the way they are uh another interesting uh, trend was on renewable energy right while uh, electricity usage has been dipping whenever offices were shut down but the renewable energy is one sunrise sector with a lot of movement in both solar as well as wind yeah and hence just to now summarize you know what i've taken you through in terms of you know all the data that we observed right uh see the consumer the consumer was deeply impacted right and continues to be deeply impacted right by uh, how the consumer is thinking and feeling and hence uh, it is but obvious that new fashion points emerge and you know in the next section i will talk about how marketers have used these fashion points to communicate or talk in a manner which is both sensitive and, and relevant yeah uh, i mentioned that you know despite a second wave uh, the consumer is seeking normalcy you know and if you are seeing uh, sectors like auto retail electronics trying to move up uh, so the consumer is trying to find out new ways to live the similar quality of life right and hence uh, behavior patterns are changing consumers are doing the same things in different ways yeah uh, despite a risk restriction on travel and entertainment and the travel sector is is always been the top contributor to the gdp the affluent the affluent is still looking for ways to spend that money right and certain industries more than others have really leveraged this pattern of the fact that you know there is a golden egg when it comes to the urban affluents and at least that is some uh, market that can be picked up right digital as i mentioned it has emerged as a savior for many industries the industry is also investing ahead of the, of the curve so certain industries which could have been completely jeopardized how has digital emerged as a savior that is something that is interesting to observe entertainment has clearly morphed for all of us right for gone are those days of uh, the family uh, you know pvr trip on the weekends hopefully it will be back but uh, really netflix has taken over and you know how has entertainment morphed and hence you know how have marketers tried to leverage those trends and finally as i mentioned you know upi payments there be new shopper and consumer journey so how is this impacting not just the media landscape but also how a market is looking at it and finally there is this consumer sensitivity towards wellness and sustainability whether it be the green energy or be fresh brand propositions in this space so these are really the summary of our findings which we will now try to uh, explore in the next section so really the next section is going to be from a communication standpoint you know while i'll move to the third section which is also about marketing and business practices for the rest of the six observation but the first observation on how have consumer passion points changed now that's something i would want to i would like to talk about so uh, you know uh, as uh, we also went into the pandemic last year and there was a sense of confusion all across we reached out to our agency partners and said that you know disasters are probably common uh, uh, far more common than a pandemic so is there any learning there and the learning that we got you know in our in conversations with our with our agencies and partners is that you know most uh, natural disasters tend to go through these four phases you know there is a breach phase there is a crisis there is a resilience and then there is a new normal or a renewal right and we have probably seen uh, this phase play out last year and it probably repeated with lesser intensity this year as well in the second wave right so what happens in these four phases in the first phase which is a breach phase you know we typically uh, herald into this phase by you know uh, our uh, you know our uh, pm going on air and probably announcing a lockdown you know where there is a lot of uh, disbelief that what's really happening you know what should what should i uh, how should i deal with this uh, you know can i find some information i mean really uh, are, are attracted to any information source possible right and that leads to uh, an opportunity for marketers to sort of provide some of the information yeah as we uh, get into a into a lockdown you know from an april when we move to a may june it's probably a crisis phase where you know uh, you know the disbelief is gone you know you sort of accepted that uh, that you know this is here this is going to stay a while right and you um, 
you realize that you know at some level probably you're not fully prepared to combat this there is anxiousness on jobs concern for loved ones right i think we all develop a sense of ocd where we are cleaning sanitizing home stocking of essentials right we are trying to learn this whole art of social distancing and working from home as we move into the resilience phase, and you know, I would say in both the years, the resilience phase has been somewhere around, you know, somewhere around July, I would say, June, July, August. It's about now where, you know, people accept the current scenario. There's a sense of optimism for the future. There is a sense of uh, gratefulness for at least what has not shifted or not changed. And there's a sense of familiarity that we try to seek out. You know, we try to uh, replace those uh, weekend going out with a family dinner with a family. Uh, we try to replace our, uh, you know, we try to replace our, a uh, fitness regime in a gym with probably uh, setting up a gym in your own house. So you try to enjoy your home time. You, there is a sense of you know, a degree of optimism sort of coming in. You're trying to find new ways of enjoying yourself, right? And really the you know renewal phase, we started somewhere around November last year. And I would say this year it is set, probably set in towards end August is where you, know, you feel a sense of relief that the worst seems to be over for now. And, you know, health and hygiene continue to remain important. You can to realize that in the room is safer than outside. But you start doing some, you know, in-home parties. You try to attend offices, maybe with masks on. And you try to really overall try to adapt in a way which feels normal. It feels different, but yeah, it feels normal, right? And these four phases, you know, is something that, you know, we outlined. And we said that uh, should we have the right initiative for each of these phases and we can really plan in advance, right? And that's the advantage of trying to break down what we are trying we are going to expect of the consumer and not just react them. So as I mentioned, the first phase, which was the, really the phase of, uh, you know, the phase of uh, seeking awareness by the consumer, yeah, with the breach phase, I would say, you know, Lifebuoy is one of those brands which, uh, which uh, uh, stole in March over a lot of other companies, a Lifebuoy, a record Kaiser. And, you know, when they said this is not a Lifebuoy ad, this is a public service message, I would say, you know, even the most skeptical marketeers of us would have believed them and said, that's right. Because, you know, I am more than uh, trying to pitch my products. I'm actually trying to understand what am I supposed to do now, right? And uh, I, I would really give credit to, you know, all of these categories to provide that large dulge of uh, home sanitizers and, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the cleansing devices that we required probably, you know, uh, and hence, uh, and the passion point is spreading awareness. I, I would say media has played a very large role of, you know, really, really talking about it day and night. And I would say there was probably no one who was untouched by the message of wearing masks, right? So, right. So, really, really, that was the first sort of rallying point which marketers talked about. As we, like I said, uh, when we, you know, got into the resilience phase, we felt a little more comfortable with what's going on there. Uh, Hershey said that, you know, maybe it's a time to pamper yourself all over again, right? Uh, you know, in Britannia, we, of course, talked about, about Kharkia Chichi is the fact that, you know, there's a lot to feel unhappy about, but, you know, maybe there is some, there are some silver linings. You are spending far more time with your loved ones than ever before, right? And hence the uh, consumer passion point of spending home time is what came up next. And finally, there was this, you know, passion point of things to do at home. Uh, I mean, somewhere around June, July last year, I think there were a record number of uh, of programs of uh, home cooking recipes. You know, Tata Sky, you name it. A lot of companies really uh, got in there because you know, the consumer was like, yeah, I am, uh, I am walled in at home, but, you know, I still want to live a full and exciting life. And, you know, certain categories like cornflakes, Greek yogurts, uh, you know, uh, hummus, uh, salsa, dips, cheese. They saw, you know, record uh, uh, meteoric sales during that time because the consumer was trying to replicate the largeness of life that he had outside within the, you know, four walls of his home, right? I uh, personally quite enjoyed the, or I, I found the Surf Excel commercial that, you know, broke on Hotstar OTT in around July. Very, very logical because, you know, what Surf said is that, you know, I, I think it will look a little... Uh, you know, out of place if I tell you that it is fine to let your kids roll in the mud when you're not letting them run out of house at all. But uh, believe you me, the mess is not going to go away. It will just not be on your walls and hence and we will be here to help you out when you need that help from us. Right? So that's something that we observed. Appreciation and gratitude, of course, this was a very large, uh, you know, consumer passion point and something that uh, brands really activated. Right. And uh, Amazon made this uh, very nice television commercial of 
celebrating their employees right a lot of other brands really talk about the fact that you know there are there are um, hospital workers i believe i i remember last year the world doctor day probably saw more activity from brands than any christmas that i've seen in the past right so there was a, a large uh, opportunity for brands as well as consumer was seeking uh, that uh, you know show appreciation and gratitude of course so support and solidarity yeah uh, it, this was really a big theme it's the you know time when we all were to feel that we are together whether it is you know banging our plates and, and spoons on our balconies or the fact that you know good day decided to talk about uh, kush kushi bars which are trying to help uh, help you know moms earn the living at home really it was a time of showing support and solidarity not just as brands but also with consumers uh, yeah and finally as we got into the new normal last year you know after initial messages of the fact that you know we're not going to tell you to order from us uh, it was a time when the qsrs decided that it's time to get our business back and the best way to get our business back and allow the consumer to you know slightly slip in into the kind of life that he's always enjoyed is to say that i'm going you know, to provide you an assurance of safety the only hands that will you touch your food are yours and that was really a large uh, you know lightning uh, rod for communication yeah and of course you know uh, how can any uh, how can any conversation today on communication be complete without the uh, you know uh, off repeat, repeated terms of moment marketing you know and you know for so many years uh, india never really focused on moment marketing because you, know, you have so many states right we cannot even agree on the same name for the for one festival i mean we call the same festival baisakhi to pongal in various parts of the country but with all of india really under lockdown it was a time when all of india was really talking the same language you know whether it is vocal for local right and once uh, marketers realized that you know all of india's conversation can really be brought together you had the swiss canal uh, uh, you know uh, blockage being talked about globally even in india i think uh, fabicol really uh, you know stole a march a lot of other brands when they wittily talked about about uh, you know uh, you know had you stuck the coke bottle to the table you won't have uh, really lost that valuation right and really uh, moment marketing is something that has become quite a buzzword and a lot of us are trying to adapt to that new reality right so you know in conclusion what i would like to say in the communication segment is that a lot of brands uh, you know pulled off media uh, at the initial phase of the pandemic but really uh, you know if you wish to uh, build a strong brand and really br big brands are those which really recover much faster if you stay invested right and hence continuing investment was extremely critical to uh, to recovering faster the key uh, you know take away for most marketers is you know how do you continue to communicate in a manner that is sensitive and relevant while being in, keeping in touch with your brand proposition so that's really you know was the communication to take uh, passion uh, take out now let's go on to the next uh, section which is about uh, you know business and marketing trends right so i had you know summarized these seven uh, learnings that we had taken out from the first section right where the first uh, learning was really what we talked about when it comes to communication but really uh, you know how have marketers tried to uh, provide a new normalcy to consumers you know where behavior patterns have changed or with uh, you know restrictions on travel and entertainment where have the affluent been putting their money you know what have uh, brands done for digital or for entertainment right and and what how are we really dealing with these changing of consumer shopper journeys or uh, you know the fashion points of wellness and sustainability so let me now talk about that you know one uh, trend at a time so like i said tired of lockdowns new behavior patterns emerge so uh, i think all of us have heard of this concept of staycations and if you were to ask somebody at 18 months back what does a staycation mean i mean you'll probably look at you as you're from mars but really you know uh, uh, all of us realize that we're going to be cooped up so well, let's be cooped up somewhere that we like and a record number of people move to their hometowns people move to the hills people move to goa for, for months right and uh, and uh, the hospitality sector was more than happy to enable these trends right so luxurious work from home packages you could get chefs of marriott sending a feast to your home gourmet bakery and wellness hampers you know i i remember you know there was a uh, there was a uh, you know internal event for marketing that we did last year and we said we're all going to be there on our screen but you know we can send cans of beer and and uh, and uh, uh, you know quarters of whiskey to people's houses so that you know we still enjoy ourselves as if you know we're still living uh, in a in a in a normal manner right uh, 
the second uh, trend as a part of this you know uh, larger trend was the alcohol alcohol home delivery i think it was initially engineered because uh, there was a large inventory of craft beer about to go bad and and they were able to get a relief from the government so gourmet uh, coffee craft beer started offering on the go services as early as july last year and uh, government eventually eased home delivery so today living liquids in bombay is one of the go to sources for home delivery of alcohol i mean having worked in diageo for a couple of years i always wondered why did this happen earlier because uh, you know if you want to normalize alcohol and you want to you know have alcohol for socialization rather for, than for something anti social home delivery is the right way to do it so why not yeah again uh, you know all of us uh, spend our happiest moments uh, uh, on doing retail therapy you know walking through malls and when malls are shut what do you do the malls decided to come to consume so you had everybody from a la- lifestyle or a pantaloon you know available in your society doing pop up stores and i think it's a trend which became fairly mass and hence really the you know opportunity for market here that you know you know when we debated with uh, when i debated with mrs akuja we distilled it as you know there is a certain pleasure in healing and and there is the opportunity for us as brands to sort of enable it yeah and that's really a larger opportunity that is there for all of us to think through saying that you know the consumer is still seeking a degree of pleasure and what can we do to sort of enable it yeah the second uh, trend that i talked about the fact that you know there, there seems to be almost uh, you know an irrational exuberance among the affluent right so you know at one point in time there is you know so we talk talk about uh, about uh, uh, you know lower mobility uh, people's wages getting disrupted and then suddenly there's a interest in in real estate and property happening right now i mean the property rates in tier 2 and 3 cities have seen meteoric rises yeah and of course is driven by the fact that you know we are spending so much more time at home we want to move to a bigger house or you know you have moved back to your hometown and say that you know can i buy some property here right so uh, there is really a, an opportunity if you are able to pitch your services right again uh, uh, luxury luxury as a sector has seen a lot of you know green shoots through the pandemic i mean i, I was quite intrigued when i uh, you know recently i wrote an article around apple about the fact that apple has actually grown by 100% last year you know and and one would want to understand why is that why has somebody as high end as an apple grown at 100% and the reason is the fact that you know all of us used to really uh, spend money on our you know luxury items in a foreign vacation right because one a 25% import duty would be passed on to us and secondly it had a lot more flaunt value if you were to buy something from abroad right and with uh, you know travel and mobility still affected especially when it comes to international travel there's a large opportunity to tap some of the exuberance among the rich yeah and that's something that uh, is something that we can look at activating yeah as i mentioned uh, digital uh, emerges as a savior and the you know large trends of recruitment in this category are showing that the future is even go more digital if not already right and uh, you know one of the first sectors that got impacted by the by the pandemic was fitness and gold gym went bankrupt culfit saw a lot of layoffs and then culfit i would say pivoted extremely smartly where they said that you know what uh, we can't invite you into our gym during the lockdown but we can surely get rithik roshan into your drawing room through a screen right with, with our online package subscription right and hence it's amazing how something like fitness was really uh, salvaged by digital uh the shaadi market is a very large market for this country and and especially given that uh, you know especially given that uh, uh, a large part of india remains an arranged marriage market right and shaadi.com was the first guys to probably realize that there is this concept of shaadi meets uh, through zoom calls right and that really provided a positive trigger i mean they also invested robustly behind this i mean and i i always get surprised when i see the kind of not just valuations but actual business that we are seeing today by d2c brands you know at one point in time one would have said that uh, you know cosmetics can only be sold in high end malls when you want to try on the product but today brands like mama earth and wow cosmetics have scaled up the business in the last 3 4 years to 500 crores and heading to 1000 crores right so they have spotted the uh, the change in the in the purchase cycle you know once upon a time awareness would be spread by your your placement in malls while conversion might still happen on digital but today when conversion and awareness is happening through a new funnel of the shopper right so hence i think uh, i mean clearly the opportunity for all of us is to say that uh, online is not just something that we also do but it is something which is central to our plans and really how are we 
uh, investing in our digital transformation journeys to make this happen. How are we rethinking our marketing plans? How are we uh, demanding plans which are which are uh, cross leveraging these these benefits and not just looking at these in isolation? The uh, fourth passion point was really on entertainment, like I mentioned, that morphed in a digital world. So you had. Uh, you know, uh, this lovely partnership between Shakuntala Devi and Vedantu and a lot of other companies. <coughs> so with Hall's shutdown and OTT gaining scale, you know, big budget Bollywood releases have tried to embrace digital. Of course, you had, you know, it's not to say that uh, we will never get back to PVR. I would say it's quite a, you know, aggressive take by by Bell Bottom, the movie to, to still get around 30 odd crores from, uh, you know, from uh, uh, you know, a cinematic release on PBRs, but the fact that you know, uh, digital is, is going to play a much and much larger role, right? Entertainment on the digital world is going to play a larger role for all of us, right? Uh, new media devices is something which I wanted to talk about because I think it took us marketers 10 years to try to understand that we need to make ad edits, which are also you know, equally effective on mute. And now we need to uh, train ourselves in a completely new manner on what's the real creative ed ed edit to be put on a Spotify or, or a Ghana. I mean, we can't use the regular radio ads which are playing over traffic, uh, uh, you know, over the traffic because it's a really intimate experience out there, right? And hence, uh, it's a you know different thing. I also mentioned about movement marketing. Now, a lot of this is about capability building uh, in house, but also from our agency. So you know, the social uh, listening is something today that we are demanding more and more from our uh, digital agency partners, right? Moment marketing is is getting many of us to wonder whether we should have a in-house resource to turn around some of these things far more quickly. OTT is help is is uh, you know making us think about the fact that you know it's not no longer as easy as you know you need a Bollywood star for a for a mainline release and an influencer for a small activation. You know today those lines have really got become far more fungible and you are you know trying to build capabilities in-house and outputs. Again, I mentioned about these. <laughs> new consumer and shopper journeys which are emerging. I would say that, uh, you know, big basket is uh, uh, and, uh, you know, an e-commerce is something that everybody in, in our organizations is now today talking about, right? And digital trans and I think all of us have now beefed up our organizational structures with at least, uh, you know, an e-commerce head or maybe a marketing resource specifically for e-commerce who will see it other than brand resources. Uh, hyper local services is, is something that's becoming more and more important with the consumer demanding more services at an arm's reach, marketing in society groups, under lift lobbies is, is getting, getting a lot of attention. And finally, digital wallets. You know, we are all using digital wallets for cash banks and gratification, but there is surely more at it. And what's more from all of these three, uh, you know, three facts is the fact that, you know, now is the time to start investing in consumer and shopper data. See, a lot of companies have always done it. I mean, in Amazon, and Amazon or Flipkart, you know, a lot of Apple players have invested in shopper and consumer data for the longest time. But probably not FMCG is quite as much. But, you know, today is the time to realize that there is a lot more investment in data that's required. And that's something that we are all uh, making baby steps towards doing. And finally, I mentioned that, you know, consumer sensitivity towards the wellness in this uh, industry seems to be rising. And hence, not only is this a large consumer passion point, so you have, I mean, I would say in the last uh, few months, I would have seen at least three new uh, beauty brands uh, talking about uh, a more sustainable lifetime as a communication passion, passion point. But some of this is also changing in the way we can expect new industries or businesses to rise. I mean, renewable will pow power is today a sunrise industry, and we you know when I only see the uh, launches of uh, Ola Electric as well as uh, uh, you know as well as uh, Revolt the bikes to say to realize that uh, there is a lot lot we can expect to change in the renewable power realm in the next 10 years. You know, government has already ratified the treaty, probably, you know, very opportune opportun time to do that, to say that 40% of our power capacity by 2030 is gonna be non-fossil fuel based. And we are trying to position ourselves as a leader here. So clearly, you know, wellness and sustainability from the point of view of business gathering as well as communication points, you know, happens, uh, is, is becoming really important. And, you know, the consumer is gonna be, you know, very fast to see when you're doing this only as an eye, eye wash. And hence the question is, you know, are we going to invest in ads or are we only going to stick to ads? I mean, one of the uh, largest uh, communication uh, communication uh, uh, pieces for Britannia that has done extremely well over the last four to five years is really <coughs> is, is really the Mari start, startup uh, activation, you know, where we have 
try to create uh, you know entrepreneurs or, or or homemakers and really inspire them and also you know fund them so it's really a time not just for uh, for ads but also for some genuine acts in this area and hence just to you know summarize in one slide what are the spin uh, passion points right so there is a opportunity for market Way to communicate in a manner that is sensitive. There is a healing, and we can surely enable this. We can, you know, tap the exuberance among the rich. On moves from fringe to central across industries. There is an opportunity to build new capabilities in house as well as in our agencies. And finally, a time to start investing in consumer and shopper data for everybody, not just a select set of industries. And more than ever, a time for acts and not acts. So that's really what I would like to talk about. And I would like to hand over the screen to uh, Mr. Sakuja to take it. Thank over. you so much, Saram. Uh, Kishan, can you just pass the control to me, please? Over to you, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. Can you see the screen? Not yet. No. My. Kishan, can you just uh, help me, please? Because I suggest please open your uh, PPT. Yeah, it is open. Have you clicked on the uh, share button, the bottom? Um, where do I click? On. So where? Sorry, you left. Oh, share. Okay. Yes. Are we good? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, lovely. Thanks, Aurobh. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, they say never waste a good recession. This, I think, is way more than a recession. We're talking about a pandemic, something like we've seen probably after over a century. Now, the thing with these pandemics is that uh, it changes things in reasonably fundamental manners. And the key is to actually be able to tap into like Saurabh was saying, the new normal. And if you can actually pick those trends up, you can actually ride on them and you can actually make a, a virtue out of a problem rather than actually have a, I mean, existentialistic issue. So, you know, in marketing, there is what to say and how to say it. So, a lot of what Saurabh was talking about right now is also what to say. He talked about the consumer sentiment. He talked about basically how the consumer sentiment is feeling quite low. But the business sentiment and the stock market and GDP outlook is all looking a little positive. And we also went around saying what are the kind of feelings that you can do right through a, a pandemic or the breach place right down to the renewal place and all of that. And within this, the various opportunities that have come up. I'm really going to focus on the aspect about how to say it, so which is the go to market piece. So, you know, if you have to fundamentally ask yourself the question, how has the pandemic really changed marketing plans? I think there's been four primary areas in which we've seen some profound changes. And I think these are, uh, these, this will accelerate. So the pandemic has really taken a trend and accelerated it. And now this is going to just take us to the growth out here is going to be really, really massive. The first point I wanted to touch on was as a marketer, should we spend or should we not spend? Because, you know, we keep, we, people keep on asking that it is a pandemic, people are in trouble. Should we, I mean, is our production also happening? Is this go to market distribution happening? Should I be there or not? So I'll tell you what has actually happened in the nature of recovery of the ADEX over the last, whatever, 18 months or so that we've had seen of the pandemic. The second thing I want to talk about is. In India, as far as media is concerned, TV has always been the largest share medium by far and continues to be. But of course, with this entire digital explosion, the role of OTT and video has also now played a role. And now you're suddenly seeing TV and, and video coexisting. So I'll briefly talk about what that environment is all like. The third is that in India, pretty much we used to, national marketers would make what we used to call an HSM plus four Southern states and maybe a West Bengal plus Maharashtra plan. So to address the entire India, there would be really say four or five plans like this. And that's what they would actually 
go to market with. That we are finding with the pandemic coming in is actually now moving to much more localized kind of planning. And I'll give you a certain perspective there. And of course, Saurabh also mentioned that in this entire pandemic, yes, the middle class is probably the most affected and the affluents are that are relatively inelastic to this. So if you really want to target them in a, in a sort of focused manner, what's the way to do that? And not the least, we all know that they're actually the, the rise of e-commerce and first time shoppers online have increased really, really hugely over this last 12 to 18 months. And that is really giving a rise to marketing departments preparing for a omnichannel or digital as this, the new word is being coined physical plus digital kind of world. So I'll give you a brief perspective on these four. Now, if I am to look at this chart of full of numbers, just the numbers are really to show you that we've actually as a media agency, our job is to see how big is the advertising market. So for example, in 2019, it was 67,600 crores where my pointer is. In 2020, it came down to 54,000 crores, which was down 20%. This is a pandemic. This is all calendar year. If I have to look at non-digital, that is traditional part, 52,000 crores went down to 37,000 crores. This is almost a 30% drop. So sure, there was a huge drop in 2020. Now, as we look at the uh, 2021 piece, we are seeing the first two quarters, the first half, we are now actually moving to a stage where if you have to start comparing with the 19s, of course, both of these are much, much higher than 20, but if you have to start comparing with 19 also, it is holding its own pretty much and some mediums more than others. So if I have to look at TV, TV is actually 62% higher in the first half versus last year and still minus 8% versus 19, but that's also because IPL, which is a huge money earner for TV, was curtailed in the first half. And of course, we are seeing the concluding half play itself out as we speak. Print is the one which got hugely affected. So we even right now, but there is some kind of a research resurgence because we're right in about the first half is 21% higher than the same time last year, but we are still 40% lower than what it was in 19. Radio 11% higher, but 47% lower than 19. Cinema, not surprisingly, because multiplexes and all haven't really opened and in the process of opening now is still continues to be terrible versus the pre-pandemic piece. The out-of-home piece is again also struggling a little bit, but now is showing signs of resurgence with traffic returning back to the cities. And we are expecting at least in the second half, this to be much better. The one big difference was digital where not only has it grown handsomely versus last year, but has also grown versus 19. So not surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, not for me at least, this digital has continued to grow even during the pandemic. So the headline right now is overall India Inc. is right now spending. Yes, we are not still quite at the 1920 levels, but I actually expect that we will get there by the time this, this calendar year is over. And TV and digital will be sort of the gainers and print and radio will still be an outdoor will still be playing catch up. Now, if we have to look at, okay, sorry, if I have to look at TV, while I was talking about the spends, the growth in inventory, because that's, I mean, it's a, this is a spends as a certain assumption of the prices you're paying. This is actually, you are measuring how much second inch people are buying on TV channels. That's really gone up 37% versus 20 and 12% versus 19. And print, of course, has gone up even more in terms of 41% versus 20, but it's still lower versus 19. So prices, you could say, are still softer than the actual growth in inventory, but prices in TV also are now hardening. Now, with this kind of inventory growth, what is interesting to see is that there has been the same 37% growth in inventory versus last year and 12% versus 19. It's really been driven by FMCGs or the fast-moving consumer goods. So out of a total of 874 million seconds that was bought on TV, 566 million came from FMCGs. So this really has been the real engine of advertising growth for a lot, for a, I mean, for the whole sector, you could say. And if you have to look at it, the others like BFSI and building also grew to some extent, e-commerce also grew 
but then the whole lot of the others like the retail entertainment and all that and some of the sectors that sort of was pointing out earlier they continue to be in a slightly muted place and if i have to look at the top say 10 or 12 advertisers just see how versus 19 20 and 21 first half how the kind of sec the inventory are buying so if you look at all the majors these are the ones who have actually bet their they, they bet their they, they put the money where their mouth is and they're really investing behind their brands because I think like Saurav was talking last time, this is a moment of flux and this is a time when strong brands can become stronger. And that is what we've seen the classical marketers. In fact, the classical marketing has been taught to India by the FMCG players and they've again sort of come to the roost, as, uh, come to the party with their guns blazing even in the first half of this year and even to some extent last year. So if you have to look sort of look, ask the question about should we be spending or not spending? The first thing we of course seeing is your supply chain and your distribution needs to be in place to spend. So in the first wave, supply chain was the biggest affected. So last year in 2020, factories were shut down when the migrant labor went away in the entire Gharvapsi piece. So actually they had the problems in even having the, the people put the, all the goods onto the trucks so they could be reach the distribution points. So that was a supply chain shortage. Second time round, even despite the entire pandemic being so disastrous and deadly, the business, the supply chain on the entire value chain was working very well. If anything, the last leg distribution was the one which actually got affected because so many people were being affected. That's why dealer salesmen, company salesmen, they weren't really making their sort of visits and really the hot selling SKUs were the ones that really sold. So. If this is in place, the precursor is that you don't want to spend too much marketing money if your basic supply and distribution is not in place. But if this is in place, this is the time that consumers are seeking reassurance and authenticity. Underline the word authenticity. They don't want to hear fluff. They want to hear stuff which has got credibility. So this is the time when visible strong brands become stronger. But equally, because it's a period of flux, the challenger brands can make inroads if the leader brand is silent. So if you are a challenger brand at this point in time, because people, and if you have a good story to tell, if you tell it, chances are it will be heard and you will get a whole lot of resonance to it. You know, everybody says that marketing is an investment, but come from one quarter to the next quarter, the minute your the bottom line or your uh, PNL is getting a little challenged, this is a discretionary kind of invest expense. So you sort of cut that. And at that point in time, you might say marketing is an investment, but it actually acts like a cost. So you're just trying to reduce the cost and save your profit. We obviously, all of us have businesses to run and it's, it's critical. But at least my humble advice is that at these points in time, you should look at your balance sheet rather than your P&L when you're making these kind of decisions. If you've got a great story, if you've got a great product, but if you've got a temporary problem at this point in time, uh, if your balance sheet can sort of protect it, you can make some investments. Don't only look at profit protection at this point in time. I think some of the, the big spenders have shown us that, and they've actually probably uh, been beneficiaries of that. So the first point was on spending versus not. You should spend judiciously on this one. The second is from TV to video. Now, TV has historically been the go to medium. It's got a out of the 1.4 billion people, 900 million people are the ones who are actually watching it. So you've got about 700 plus channels. You, I mean, right through when you, whenever you see it, even if the, the biggest of the e commerce players who get all the business from digital, they know that when it comes to reach to build mass awareness, you do need TV. We've seen that. Also, this table that you can see is you said that the, the basically they looked at paid search, display, short form video, and standalone digital ROI. And they said that in all of this digital kind of things, what would be the, the drop that you would have had in your productivity or ROI if TV was not there? And everywhere it finds out that anything from 7 to 20% drop in your ROI happens without TV. So TV needs to be an integral part of your plan. And what has happened in the pandemic is that probably even more than digital, especially in the initial phase because people were seeking reassurances that people were looking, especially news channels, 
and uh, including a few more like movie channels and kids channels, those people who are at home. For non-prime time and news channels, it went and took a huge blip. So this, this chart shows you the weekly viewing minutes and the daily average reach, it really went up. Over time, it stabilized and now we are back to the pre-pandemic levels. But the point is that TV is the first go-to option and that's and the pandemic proved that in spades. Having said that, OTT viewership is also increasing. Saurabh talked about 678 million people are on broadband. We estimate at least 500 million of them are actually watching video on, on their mobile phones or online. YouTube is the biggest one, which is almost about 450 million, if not more. We estimate the other OTTs put together would be another 150 million. This will go up, like for example, Hotstar during this IPL will probably have a spike coming in right now. But easily you have about 500 million to the 900 million of TV who are on OTT. So, you know, and if you look at the consumption, on average, people watch TV about three to four hours in a day. That's the average in a, in a day. You're actually reaching on OTT. You're reaching an average of the people who watch OTT. They're each consuming on average about one hour a day, pretty much. And that's, and that's also going to increase. So people are watching more media and within this both TV and OTT have a role to play. Increasingly also the, the content, which is, and again, sort of made a mention. So for example, the cinema viewing behavior is changing with a whole lot of releases now happening on OTT. At the same time, you also have great web series coming there, offering brands content opportunities. So clearly, and of course, the entire thing comes with a certain degree of interactivity that OTT follows. So this is becoming a very happy hunting ground for advertisers to get into. Which is why we believe that the TV plus digital, you know, think of it from a consumer standpoint. From a consumer standpoint, you're either watching an uh, ad or a program on TV, and you could as easily be watching it on your mobile phone. So Anupama, with that you, which is a, one of the popular serials, is watched on TV. The same thing maybe on catch up or on demand is being watched on OTT. So if the consumer is pretty much the same, then maybe if you have to keep reach them through advertising, it should also be looking at it the same way. So currently, the numbers that I put out here was from IRS, which is the absolute uh, sort of authority on the full baseline. And this is based on first quarter of uh, 2019. That was the last time when it was done. Even that was telling you that you had reached about 450 million people on internet, which the number now we think is 678. And, and against 840, which now has been upgraded to the 890 million on TV. So we are talking about how TV plus digital at the deepest level is actually got the reach. The second chart, which is telling you is that if you take TV and if you add digital to it, you get a, for the same cost, you can grow your reach of your plan considerably by 10, 15, 20%, you can actually grow it. The chart out here is telling you that a large number of people, 45% of the people when they're watching the TV have a digital device with them, mostly the phones, all or most of the times. Now that straight away tells you, which is why it's not a coincidence that every time you put on a TV ad, you also see that as your search for your brands suddenly spikes up because, I mean, it's obvious, right? If people have seen the ad, you said something in the ad, which seems interesting, you've got a phone with you, you go on a search or you may go to the website. So this kind of action is happening and it's become a way of life. And we, and we were in a media agency, so we are seeing this, it's, you can generalize it. And this has just increased exponentially over the last 18 months. And which is where, if you take integrated plans, you'll find that across the various aspects of a marketing funnel, be it awareness, ad awareness, the entire conversations or buzz, consideration of purchase intent, the entire, all of these things, each one of them, when you take TV as well as, or and compare that with TV plus video, you actually land up getting a blip. So a big, big call out right now is, if you want to really grab this market well, make plans which have, in, have got both in them. Again, from the ad tech standpoint, what I did was I carved out the TV spends and I added the video spends from digital and I pl plotted it from 15 to 21. So earlier, total video was 18,000 crores. It's now gone to 33,000 crores. This is what we're expecting for 2021. And digital as a share of total video was only 5% in 2015. So pre-pandemic, it was about 15, 16%. Now it's shot up to 20. Right now, I've kept it at 20 because that's what we have put for the year. But I think at the end of the year, it's going to be higher than that, about 22, 23%. So both TV and video is going to grow, but this is, is going to be a thing where both of them are going to continue. 
The third one opportunity is in the context of uh, the opportunity to target. Like I told you earlier, people used to make plans for one HSM, four southern states, maybe a West Bengal and a Maharashtra. So let's see how the thing has changed. We've always always known at the best of times there are many Indias in one India. So this one just plots the GDP of each state with different colors, which tells you that in terms of affluence, how how they change. Not only at a state level, even within the state, we all know that the complete the market, I mean, a Western UP and Eastern UP could be two totally different markets that you're talking to. But still, when it comes to marketing, we're still talking of the state pretty much as one, and even the market India as pretty much as HSM plus four southern states and so on and so forth. Now, what has happened is that the pandemic has forced us to start looking at the heterogeneity of India as a necessity. I put two charts of from the COVID-19 India.org. These are the active cases on 30th June. These were on 29th September. Look at how the circles are changing. And we all know that. So, for example, there are 5 lakh 17 out here. There are a little about un under 3 lakhs uh, uh, on this particular date. So, good is coming down, but the markets are changing. So, at this point in time, if you have to really respond to the lockdowns and unlockdowns, how do you actually go about it? You know, so this is where, for example, what we've gone and done is we've gone and attached a certain market potential score to each district bases the the ability of the, the affordability of that particular district the ability, the media sort of re awareness or media sort of reach that you have out there and the entire affordability that you have in terms of all these employment structures house etc and all of these so by doing this what comes out is across the 740 districts there were about 640 mapped in 2011 so we have about a 20% of the districts which account for maybe 70% of the total potential now, think of it this way from a marketer right now, it's important to conserve cash and really get a high ROI. So if we actually go to these 170 districts and start marketing and making plans with them, you'll probably get a bigger bang for your buck. So the obvious, the obvious question is how? So now we've actually tried to develop these ready reckoners, which allow you to do planning at a district or sub-state level. So TV, for example, in the bark, bark is a TV measurement system. We only used to look at typical state deliveries but you can like a UP allows you to look at 10 million plus and rest, rest of the state. So we break it up. We also give more skew to reach those channels. In print, you can do addition specific buys. On the entire digital scheme of things, we now have the ability to read through certain tools that we've developed. What is the kind of which other which of the OTT channels? YouTube is a unifier right across. But you've got OTT channels like uh, like MX Player, which is suddenly making big inroads in UP Z5 between UP, uh, Andhra and Maharashtra has got some clear pockets. Hotstar seems to be fame quite, quite well penetrated in a large number of markets. But the ability to see which ones to go to and then maybe do pin code level targeting and so on and so forth. And likewise, without a form of activation, this is requiring the need of the R right now is we have to get much more exacting in our needs and actually tailor make the plans. So the table on the right shows actually how for the same cost, well, we were able to, for the same cost, give about 40% more GRPs and higher reach by actually taking a plan which was much more local in nature. And this, I think, is going to become the increasingly incumbent on marketers to sort of force themselves not to go for spray and pray national plans into much more targeted local plans. Now, the affluent is the interesting one. You know, the affluent. Think of it this way, all the measurement systems that happen, like in, P, in, in TV, you have a people meter, which is put into people's homes, which actually comes and tells you what is the kind of rating that is happening. Now, all of us today who are on this call, if anybody came to us and said, we would like to sort of hijack your remote and put another people meter or barometer as it's called these days, and that will sort of uh, read your viewing behavior, we won't allow them access into our homes. So it's always a challenge to go to the creamy layer and find out what they do. There have been attempts made, but I think now there is a need to go beyond just classical data into, into more innovative ways. So for example, there are 20 million connected TV sets, but the TV measurement system, for example, there are about 13 million of them who actually subscribe to HD, the, the entire IPL on, on HD. But it still tells you that they'll probably, IPL is getting a reach of half a million on HD or 1 million on HD, which obviously is underreported. So you have to use your judgment 
and to the people out here i find here when i talk to my clients who are entrepreneurs you know the ones who are uh, small scale industrialists or or just guys who are running businesses on their own they get this in a second they know where they use their judgment and they actually are able to take these punts far more than corporate clients who actually look at data and have become slaves of data i think when it's coming to targeting the influent whether affluent whether it's connected tvs whether it's hd tvs whether it is how you're using digital all of these are going to be things where you have to use considered judgment along with the data to come out with calls and i think you'll make better plans which finally takes me to the third point which is digital has exploded everything now an as we are speaking about digital exploding and digital adoption you also may have heard that people are talking like good guys like google are saying that soon the cookie is going to be taken away so if the cookie is going to be taken away how do you target somebody increasingly it will require advertisers to build their first party data today a lot of advertisers when they are actually advertising normally their their spots on on digital so they they make out a plan on say whatever youtube or or hotstar whatever it is that plan goes and then the next plan they come and make another plan and they've lost all the data that they've collected from the first then another same client is gone and is running a performance where they're trying to get sales or walk ins or leads by by actually for talking to another agency or themselves and actually going to them that data they're keeping now if you were able to keep the first data for your branding campaign and actually link it up with your sales your sales campaign the consumer is same in both cases they are seeing an ad and they may be reacting a little differently but the you combine the two data and the aha moments that comes in and as you start integrating with dmps our own dmp is called data us we can actually tie it up with other data guys third party data and you suddenly build consumer profiles which are very interesting to go and target so cohort targeting is something which is again i've seen the kind of traction that we've had in the last 18 months has been much more than the previous 3 years or 4 years that we were trying to push this the other one is that like the same connected thing if you take a look at the the funnel there is a entire top of the funnel piece which is all about awareness then you talk middle of the funnel which is about consideration and bottom of the funnel is actually about getting people to buy you so if that's the case you really need say high reach media and you need to build some amount of awareness and brand trust in consideration it's all about personalized media which is building consideration and this is all about out and out performance so increasingly it is now possible to actually list out here what are the kind of metrics that you want to have in place and then they can all be tied in to one another so you have cross attributions across each of these and you can now talk about one through the final kind of plan rather than talk about marketing in silos this is another sort of corollary that has come in from this entire piece and like sora was talking about these are some new experiences the entire omni channel piece we seeing so much of research online purchase offline seamlessly you seeing experience centers giving way i mean making up from the outlets that used to go to you can actually have experience centers which are online you have social media which is now actually becoming an extension for sales and of course you have the entire ar and vr so you can actually uh, any kind of thing if you're in a cosmetic brand you can actually buy a you can see that the tone of uh, the whatever the makeup that you want to do thanks to the ar vr kind of products which they have in all of this look at the number of people who sort of embraced e-commerce for the first time during the pandemic 26% for otc 24% for food and beverage so much for 20% for clothing and accessories so on and so forth all of these came in during the pandemic and now you've reached the stage when you ask them the question that will you be spending higher on uh, basically are you spending the same or are you spending more than usual right now across categories you finding that by and large people are spending more than usual even as the pandemic is going so in all of this it's giving rise to e-commerce marketing now e-commerce marketing amazon as and flipkart are the two big players out there and amazon as amazon marketing services is probably a huge platform now which is now today earning more money than most media networks in maybe tv networks and and it's huge it's in thousands of crores now which is where clients are coming in and advertisers are saying that i need cataloging i need to have a paid promotion strategy on this entire e-commerce platform i need to be able to have this entire through the funnel analytics piece 
running out there. I need to do my marketplace optimization and I need to do my online reputation management to actually understand what people are saying about my products and put it all together in this e-commerce marketing. Link to e-commerce marketing and sort of made a point on that is the entire D2C or direct to consumer. You have to now build your capability to actually service consumer directly through your own social, the, the digital assets. It will also give you more margin than going to e-commerce. It keeps, retains the control and of course, importantly, it gives you the data. So these are all things which are right now taking off in spades and you should be part of this. So in conclusion, how has the pandemic changed the marketing plans? Brave marketers are spending, but they're keeping their eye on ROI. From TV, please start embracing TV and video. This is the time when you can't do lazy marketing. You have to go much more into targeted local marketing where your actual spends, where you're very expecting your growth to come from. You should also sort of, I've right now talked about the affluent because that was a segment that came up in the overall COVID analysis. But in general, you should do micro segmentation of your of, of your target audience and then have a plan to reach the, the, the segments. And then in the entire digital world, harness data to create a consumer cohorts, do through the funnel marketing, and of course, start embracing e-commerce marketing and D2C. So finally, I think that was our last slide. Basically, the, what the pandemic has forced us is to really take the flab out of marketing and make it more accountable. The savvy marketer is going to now grab this opportunity in spades and I think create a competitive advantage for itself. That's what Saurabh and I had for you today. It's been wonderful putting it together. I hope it was of some use to you. We'd love to take questions. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for a detailed presentation and uh, uh, told us through your presentation how consumers are behaving in the new normal. So far, uh, we haven't received any question. Uh, I would like to request all participants, I mean, they can raise your questions. And whosoever wants to uh, raise your hand and ask questions, uh, we, we can unmute them. Can you, uh, Christian, can you take out my control so then I can also see the chat box? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I have taken your uh, presenter right, sir. Thank you. Sorry, any concluding comments from your side? No, I think it's been a, a fairly comprehensive piece. I think you must have already answered all the questions on our deck. So uh, I think it was a good one. So uh, I'm comfortable for mine. Actually, sir, I uh, we were uh, waiting for uh, Dr. Sandeep Goyal, uh, co-chairman of the council, uh, to give his uh, concluding remark. Actually, so far he hasn't joined. I think so. Give him. Mm -hmm. Ah, so we have one question. We have one question. Yes, sir. From Vivek Malhotra, how does one compare TV and digital live streams? Should I take that? Yeah, yeah, yeah we please do. Okay, you know, I'll give a background here. There was about three years or four years back. Okay, the TV measurement system is called BARC, and it is sort of uh, put together by the a joint industry body, which is so all advertisers, broadcasters, and agencies form the board of BARC. So there was a move to, at that point in time, come out with a, a product which measures TV ratings and web ratings. That was supposed to be called ACOM. Now, for whatever reasons, that never really took off, which has forced a lot of us in, our, in the in the agency world to come out with a TV measurement system. So, or rather, a video measurement system. So, typically, what we are doing these days 
is is actually we are we are picking up TV data at one level, and then we are picking up the entire streaming data from uh, the entire from the 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 website or the digital side and using certain models, trying to equate them all into the same TV viewing base and then actually seeing what is the cross reach between all of them. So end of day, it's all about in TV, the measurement is all what we call reach and frequency. So reach into average frequency will give you what we call gross rating points. It is possible to compute that on TV. It is separately possible to compute that onto digital and we use certain models right now to merge the two together. So that's how we do it. Sir, we have one question. Uh, he will ask just Mr. Jain Bose, I am just uh, unmuting. Mr. Jain Bose, can you hear me? I think they're muted. Uh, even Vivek was trying to speak, but he was muted, so he typed out his question. Mr. Sangu, I am just. Hello, you said audible, sir. Hello, Mr. Jain. We can hear you. Just you please ask your question. Mr. Sangu, I am. Yes, sir. Is it audible, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Just please ask your question. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. How much to spend on marketing for? Uh, is there any some role? I'm sorry. Any much? Yeah, to, uh, some companies are spending too much money on marketing. So, is there any some role? Have to spend a low or very high or medium? What is your opinion on that? No, you know, so, there's a certain there's a certain process. For, there's a process that you you adopt for finding out marketing budgets. So oh, wow. there will be another seminar, but but uh, oh, typically people okay. use advertising to sales. People use share of voice by share of market. People use a marketing plan based thinking. So if I want to do a launch, then I need to have a minimum so much spend because I need to reach so many people. So there are two. There are many ways in which uh, you do certain budgeting okay. for your uh, for your marketing plans. Uh, marketing plan, but that that of, offline. Offline, okay, yeah, that's sorry, yeah, that is a very long, uh, long debate, yeah. But believe me, there's not every you talk uh, to any marketing guy, he may have 500 okay. crores marketing spend, he may have 10 crores marketing spend. All of them feel that the money is too little. I saw 10 crores on the investment or perspective or what angle? I'm sorry, 5 to 10 crores spending on the investment bracket or in what basis? No, no, I'm just saying that any kind of marketing budget. Okay. Whatever the marketing budget that you have, it could be a five crore marketing budget, it could be a five hundred crore marketing budget. But chances okay. are, you know, there is so much to be done. You never, you never seem to have enough. So you always have to make trade-offs, and you always have to be very clear about what you want marketing to do, and then you decide okay. how much to spend and where to spend it. And if I invest for fifty crore, then marketing should spend at least one crore or more. I can't answer offhand. It, 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 okay, you got okay. to understand the full context of the. You got to get, take the full brief and then say it. There's no like yeah. silver bullet that if you have so much sales, so there's uh, so much to be marketed. Segment, based on segment and the location where we target, based on product. And marketing so, sales so, needs to have separately people. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand. Marketing, the marketing and sales they need to have separately a team for that. Marketing and sales. Sorry, you're hurting that. Data is full sales. Some tentative idea. Sir, we have one more question. 
if consumer doesn't reach to us then what the seller strategy during the lockdown especially food industry uh, industry in rural area um specifically for the food industry if if they can't reach you because your shops are shut and your chains are shut then you have to start thinking about a delivery system so a lot of our clients have start they move from in restaurant dining or um, is it a is it a is it one of those food uh, like is it a fmcg brand that that you, buy, you you normally buy and keep at home or is it one of those you are you talking about that a, a restaurant brand i don't know if it's a food brand then um, you got a you got the expert in food marketing who's sitting out here he'll tell you sir for oxygen marketing bangladesh nepal is better or bangladesh brand in rpa that's uh, 30 percent that's a uh, transport cost involved in oxygen transport for neighboring country can you suggest location and uh, which is the white country i'm sorry i didn't get the question which is the white country for oxygen export because 30 percent uh, is involved on in transportation cost eh? 30 to 50 percent which is a white country bangladesh or uh, nepal bhutan or sri lanka neighboring distance and uh, medium distance the poor vietnam excuse me sir can, can you write down your question because it, you're it's not coming across very clearly maybe my my uh, the sound is bad uh, maybe no i will uh, reiterate uh, because i am just write down a question no Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ramana, uh, you can ask your uh, question. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Bajaj. Thank you, Mr. Vikram. Um, you know, uh, you have really helped us unlock a wealth of information that was really all over places. And, you know, in the last one, one and a half hours, you really have Put it in a nice capsule. Thank you so much. I am sure a lot of us would get benefit out of it. I had a question to Mr. Vikram Sakuja. Um, now the question is, uh, uh, but the, there is no doubt that you know print is degrowing in its own manner. Uh, do you do you see a a, a perceptible uh, shift in spends towards the vernaculars like a Pudhari, uh, Ananta Vikatan, or a Malayana Madhuroma Madhubhumi? And uh, if the spends are shifting, uh, do you see these brands also bolstering their digital platforms? Uh, I'm a little curious. The, in answer, the answer is yes to both. Yeah. So one thing which is very clear is that the entire regional language move to regional language is growing in spades. Maybe we should have made a specified. I'm glad you raised that question because anywhere you go, whether it is, whether it is, um, languages like in tv or whether it's in newspapers or whether it's online the in you know, online guys for some reason call it indic but uh regional language is growing like mad it's like search today is happening 10 times more in regional languages than in english how it started so clearly regional is languages is the way to go no question about it as far as print is concerned for quite a while now that Regional print has been very popular and most marketers are sort of now indexing. There was a time when people used to over index English, but clearly it's being balanced out a bit more and people are going after regional paper print because that's where the reach is. That's where the people are. So on both these counts, yes. And on the your, your associated question, almost each and every print publisher had now has uh, a very flourishing online uh, sort of uh, issue as well. So they have anything from 25% to 80, 90, even 100% of the print readers coming from uh, online. So clearly it is increasing on all fronts. So, and once again, if you have to, like we were talking in the TV plus environment, TV plus video kind of environment, even in the, in the future, if you're going to be really looking at a consumer who's chasing, who's reading news, you can be agnostic to the medium and actually advertise on newspapers or, or you could advertise on their online paper as well. It is just the format on which it's being read. So, uh, yes, absolutely regional as well as well, it's going more online. Got that, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for answering the query that I had. Thank you. Sir, we have a last question because we are running out of the time. 
uh, what preferences country neighborhoods please suggest uh, will those who have shifted to ott uh, return to tv sir mr sangu who was speaking to you uh, he has written this uh, question sir so what preferences country neighborhoods so if you're talking about bangladesh and nepal look currently i don't know i'm not sure if i got the question but is it how do you reach people in bangladesh and nepal out of india i don't know uh, so we have a one more question uh, ipl has a major impact in the ad spend what percentage of the ad is spent in uh, is toward this event mm, i would expect about just advertising would would be in just on tv or hotstar it should be in the range of 3 to 3500 crores 3000 to 3500 crores is there about should be the pure advertising spend is my estimate on top of that of course there is an entire ground sponsorship team sponsorship as a property it's worth much more but specifically tv advertising and hotstar advertising will be in this range okay sir and this 3500 crores by the way is about out of the 30 odd thousand crores of video so it's almost 10 percent of the ad spend or the tv ad spend is coming on this one property it's it's huge now sir we uh, conclude the session uh, thank you so much sir for your uh, uh, informative insightful presentation and i would like to convey my sincere thanks to uh, chairman uh, mr thomas burgess uh, national marketing and uh, both uh, marketing experts uh, Mr. Uh, Vikram Sakuja, CEO, uh, Medis uh, Group CEO, Medicine Media, and uh, Mr. Saurabh uh, Bajaj, Head Marketing, uh, Britannia. Thank you so much, sir, for your time and efforts. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.